No, this isn't the introduction to a fancy Indian wedding, nor is it the introduction to the movie Mohobbutten, unfortunately for you guys. This is the promotion for my podcast, The Power of Bessa, and I, the host, Serena, will answer the burning question that's been on everybody's mind. Which historical figure should feature on the rupee? Because Gandhi is printed on every rupee note, I was wondering, where's everyone else? And this isn't just about the academics, you guys, it's also about you, the listeners. So, can you tell me, can you name any other historical Indian figure apart from Mahatma Gandhi and possibly Indra Gandhi? No? I didn't think so, which is exactly why I'm doing my podcast. And I'm not shy about who we talk about, so we're looking at men, women, high caste, low caste, kings, queens, controversial figures, politicians, basically any dark filled corner of history is what I'm hoping to shine a light on. Anyway, enough of my ranting, this has been The Power of Bessa, spelt P-A-I-S-A, you can also follow me on Twitter under The Power of Bessa, imaginatively, and you can also tweet me about who you think should be featured on our next episode. Okay, I'm done now. Asian Crew out. This game will make you come in less than three oh, seconds. Yeah, yeah. Try not to come moving these jewels around. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I, I read a thing on Reddit where it was like people asking, "Has anybody ever clicked on those?" And what happens? And somebody was like, "It took me to a link to a free trial of like Star Trek Online." <laughs> what? <laughs> like, hey, well, all right. We'll see if this game is gonna make me come in thirty seconds or not. And I it mean, did. Then again, I am a I am a gunner on like a fucking like oh, Liberty shit. class fucking starship or whatever. Try I, not to come. Have fun trying not to do that when Worf is is your is breathing down your neck. Yeah, he's your Ooh. gunner. Or what, what, what does he do on the ship, Jerry? Uh, he is the security officer. I feel like he's in. Tr- he, doesn't he control the guns? Oh, he's Mac. Well, yeah, he's yeah. the security officer. Okay. Yeah. So he's Mac from Always Sunny. Yeah, he's yes. like he's like he uh, the uh, ocular pat down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he's like he's like sir, sir. I I advise that we arm all torpedoes. And he's like, no, Worf. Yeah, he's calm like, down, Worf. <laughs> he's like, dang it. I, I advise that we blow the shit out out of everyone we come in contact yeah. with. Yeah. Right. I, I advise that we blow our loads all That's over everyone that we and he's come like in contact with. It. What's there... wrong, Worf? Does your heart not crave warfare? <laughs> Are you at peace? Silence! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Worf was yeah. like sitting at a table at a cafeteria yeah. and there's these two regular ass Klingons <laughs> and they were just like mocking the shit out of him and he was like trying to eat his like it. porridge his, or whatever. His, his porridge? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he eats. His, his ca- 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 ca. Yeah, you know? porridge. With yeah, his blood porridge. wine. Yeah. Uh, can I do a little bit of housekeeping before we begin? Uh, Are you going to clean up his house or? No. No. You're like, this place it's is own, filthy, yeah, and I cannot work job. in it. I, I, I love a, a white guy uh, cleaning on Mexican's house. This is great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we actually had a listener. Uh, his name's Max. He sent us an uh, email. Thank you, Max. Uh, he asked a really good question. We figured we'd, we'd answer it on the show. Do you think that Curtis LeMay was the person that was in charge of the bombs dropped on Puerto Rico? Do we get to do a quiz? <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. it. I think no. Why? Because it would be just too perfect. I, I know the answer because <laughs> you told it to me, so I don't want to... Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I can pretend. I, yes. Why? Uh, I, well, I know it's no, so that's why I said yes. <laughs> it is no. It's a great <laughs> question, though. No, Kurt, Kurt LeMay was the head of street, Strategic Air Command. And what they mainly do is uh, they're in charge of the nuclear armaments and the delivery systems at the time were the B-52 bombers. Oh, yeah. So if they would have nuked Puerto Rico, he would have been the one. <laughs> he would have been the one. He, he probably been was one. trying to get him to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, he tried to get him to nuke Cuba. So there you go. <laughs> right. At that, actually, at the time, he was the newly minted head of SAC during 1950 and actually a couple of months before October 1950 when all that stuff went down he was actually carrying out those uh, missions across Russia that he wasn't really supposed to be doing <laughs> and maybe could have started World War 3 
But no, the guy who actually was in charge of this, his name is Major General Luis R. Estevez. And actually, he was the first person of Hispanic descent to graduate from West Point. Oh, very... And he was a Puerto Rican. Yeah. yeah. I mean, congrats, yeah. but uh, it's look what you've done. Congratulations, yeah. kill your own people. It's and, very, yeah, yeah, very interesting that he was Puerto Rican. Well, I mean, a lot of the insular police force were also yeah. Puerto Rican. It's actually super interesting, though, like going back, he actually became a major while he was with General Black Jack Pershing ah. looking for Pancho Villa. There you go. Oh. Hey. So there you go. He was the very modern, uh, the very <laughs> model of a modern major general. Yeah, uh, there, there you, you go. go. Okay, I don't yeah. think he was actually major general. You can always general. cut out that first not, not that seem like you're real sharp. I actually he said it. it. I can't believe it. It's the first did. time in my life I've <laughs> gotten that right. I was like, there's no way he's going to pull this off. And I didn't. Yeah. It was like, and I did. It's nice. like a triple axel. Yeah. <laughs> did it like a dope kickflip or, yeah. you know, an ollie or I don't know what any of those things 900. mean. 900. Thank know. you, Max, for that question. That was a great question. I mean, we respond to all the emails and questions that you send to us. We just figured this was a really good question and we wanted to really answer it, it during there. the show. Yeah, indeed. It was Jerry, a great question. Jerry ain't lying. He he shared it with all of us and said, "Hey, this is a really good question. We should answer it." <laughs> and I said, "Okay." We acquiesced. Uh, I didn't have a lot to to, uh, to answer other than he was uh, commander in chief of SAC at the time. Yeah. Welcome to th- another edition of the History Boys podcast. I am one of your hosts, Tyler Armantrout, History Boy. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a theme this week. Uh, history uh, History Boy sitting here. <laughs> extraordinaire. Extra- I, I was going to say extraordinaire. I was like, have I it done extraordinary? too obvious. I, I was going to say extraordinaire, but I thought it was too obvious. So well, who the fuck you are you? To say it. I'm, I'm Chris Whedon, two of our history boys. Uh, he well, counts as Of two. value. Oh. I've doubled the value of a, one we, history we boy. We bring a lot of value <laughs> for the amount Dude, of Dude, I don't know if you've been watching the show, but I've been explaining to my friends here how famous I am. And that it's getting old. It is for an unrelated <laughs> incident where he... Um, in, some might say infamous. Some yeah. might be it had to do with going door to door when I moved into my place. But I digress. <laughs> I am Chris Whedon, and I am a history boy. Well, and also if you put me and Zach together, you get one Chris. Yeah, true. weight wise, that's probably. <laughs> <so. laughs> I'm, I'm also <laughs> pretty tall. Yeah, that's and true. fatter than I've ever been. <laughs> I am the tallest history boy. That is a fact. That is a this fact. is a fact. Uh, it's I, all in the legs. <laughs> He's I very, had him elongated. Nice. He got a very knees short down. torso. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very short. Yeah, he's a man with long pants. Yeah, very long inseam. You see him out of the corner yeah. of your eye, you think you're seeing stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh my, my glasses must be warping. Oh, I'm not wearing glasses. I just see a guy with very long pants. Got to get him at a special store. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's all kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in the room with us now? Yeah. I, I, I am Zach Mech. I am also a history boy, uh, also a uh, part-time uh, uh, Gundam pilot in ah, training. Uh, yeah. I, I am currently working for uh, for the Xeon Federation, but only so that I can get my sweet hands on that red comet, if you know what I mean. Ooh. I don't, I don't. <laughs> but I assume it's a dildo. <laughs> sounds it is. Dope. It is, yes. Okay. It sounds it's dildo. It's a motorized dildo. Uh, it's a whole. It thing. just steamrolled the fact that it said dildo. Dildo. Oh, you said dildo. Oh, yeah, I didn't hear that. Dude, that is dildo. Yeah, I like it, Tyler. Yeah. Good job. Better I'm than sorry dildo. I, that. <laughs> I was just blown. <laughs> uh, are you a dildo or a dildo? Dil, don't you forget about me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, and I am Jerry Nash. I am also a history boy. A history boy that's in a lo- <laughs> a history boy that's in a way better mood this time than than our last two episodes. I think we all are. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that this was emotionally thing, draining. Fuck, Jerry. This this one will be a lot more fun. <laughs> this one will be a lot more entertaining than we, we, than than our last two. I'm sorry, but you know it's history. We gotta talk yeah, about. Of course, it's just it's important. Oh, it's but rough. we were all like, can we please do a fun one this time? And Jerry, being the normally proportioned man that he is, <laughs> said that we could. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited because uh, you were really bumming me out the last two episodes. Well, yeah. this time, I, I got something fun for you. I got Diogenes of Sinope. Yay! Or Sinope. This is my as it, as it has been. Yes, Chris has wanted to do this one for a long time. But yeah, I've heard it pronounced both ways, Sinope, uh, Sinope. But the thing is, is modern day Sinope 
is a real place where Sinope used to be, mm -hmm. and it's spelled different. Yeah, they cut off that E. Yeah. Oh, so. cool. So Diogenes of Sinope, otherwise known as Diogenes the Cynic, was a Greek philosopher in the 4th century BCE. Being by far the most eccentric philosopher of all time, unfortunately, all we really have about Diogenes are stories that are all probably untrue. Oh. But they certainly paint a picture of who he was. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> now, Diogenes lived in Athens in an old wine cask. See, I thought that that was a spelling mistake. No. I was like, clearly you mean castle and suck at spelling. <laughs> but no, like, no, no, no. He, I, and I know you'll get into it more later, but yeah. like, he, he lived in a, a wine cask? Yeah. An empty, like, it's like a wine barrel made of clay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a wine cask. It was turned sideways, and he just kind of sat and lived in there. And if he paid $3,000 a month, he probably lived in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. For real. <laughs> uh, he wore ragged clothes. He had no possessions. And he didn't have any shame. Cool. He was proud of not having any shame. What a badass. And he was arguably the most powerful man in the world. Nice. <laughs> How does that work? Because he we'll was whipping his dick out in front of aristocrats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get there, Tyler. Is, is, is he the, the whole cause of that aristocrats joke? No. <laughs> no. He, he, he wrote that. <laughs> he would... <laughs> I'm sure he would love that joke, though. <laughs> well, when you have no shame, you can't find the humor in the scenario. You're like, that's a thing people could do. Right. Well, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I think I he honestly, found humor in a lot of the things he did. I honestly think that Diogenes was just a comedian at his time. <laughs> like, he made fun of... Everything. He worked blue. Everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In order to understand Diogenes as we move forward, let's understand more about his school of thought. Cynicism. Mm -hmm. now, cynic I don't know, Jerry. <laughs> now, cynicism is not the same as skepticism, but cynicism today means something a lot different than it did in ancient Greece. Antisthenes, the first cynic, was a student of Socrates. Hmm. And Socrates, I mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm going to really do here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oversimplify this, just for mm -hmm. the sake of time here. I, yeah. I don't have time to go into all the minutia of their philosophical beliefs and stuff here. I'm right. just going to kind of go through it here. Plus, it gives us room to make so many more episodes about this. Right, stuff. exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Socrates believed that having a high moral standard, virtue, and being, like, self-sufficient, those two things, having, having good virtue just a high moral standard, and to be self-sufficient as you live your life, those are the keys to knowledge and living a happy life. Mm -hmm. Basic. Antisthenes took it a step further and said to live a purposeful, happy life, you would need to be virtuous in accordance with nature. Now, that, that doesn't mean like, you know, recycle, plant a tree. Well, yeah, that doesn't really mean, like, be, like, environmentally friendly. That means your surroundings that you have around you. Mm -hmm. Nature. What is already there around you. Live in accordance with that. Okay. Right? Yeah. When you die, you just sit on the ground. You just, yeah, toss you in the garbage. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Because another piece of the cynicism uh, philosophy is uh, you should have no fear of death. Mm -hmm. Because you're not aware when you're dead. So if you're not aware when you're dead, then what difference does it make? How very Arby's. Yes, yes right. I was about to say. Yeah, he, he definitely would follow the uh, Nihilist yeah. Arby's Twitter handle. Yeah, and we'll see, we'll see how easy it is for them to hold that philosophy yeah. when I put a fucking gun to their head. <laughs> a loaded gun with one bullet in it, and we're playing a game of life and death. <laughs> you're just saying this because of a uh, cash plane or whatever, right? Yeah. Money yeah. plane. Yeah, yeah. Money money plane. Russian, Russian roulette was a game on the money plane, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they also had a point, and this kind of goes through Epicurus, and it goes through like the Roman cynics, and it even is kind of there in Stoicism, and all these kind of go together. They kind of build off of each other. The idea that if God was real and created the earth and had all of these things, like the universe and the cosmos and all these things, why would God care at all about you when there's this entire cosmos and universe that he's created? Wouldn't he be, like, fucking around with other shit? And actually, I heard it described in the best way to really illustrate this point. You're in Andy's toy box, 
Andy has a new toy and is not playing with you anymore. So all of us on Earth, right now, are just in the bottom of Andy's toy box. We're Woody from the beginning of Toy Story. Yeah. Well, Without that would be the end of Toy Story. Well, that would be happened. that would be like a philosopher trying to find God or somebody yeah, trying yeah, to right. find okay. God. I came yeah. in here a staunch Christian, and you have already <laughs> shattered all my views of the world. Yeah. You're full blown atheist now. Whoops. Whoopsie. All you had to do is explain it in Toy Story, and Tyler got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> this Thanksgiving is going to be a wild ride. <laughs> That's great. What the implications of this are, though, is that anything created by mankind that is not essential for your own natural existence. This includes societies and everything in societies and everything that goes with societies. That means that's not natural. It's right. not natural. So to live your life in the most virtuous way and to be happy would be to reject anything not natural, right? Because you're living in accordance with nature. So that would mean to reject society and everything in society. But I, I like bars and booze. Well, and then you're not a cynic. Not in the Greek sense. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. what if what is natural to you is what exists when you're born? Therefore, if society exists when you're born, that's what's natural. So online society shopping is, is virtuous. No, it's not. Society has been created. These things have been created by man. So it's yeah. not natural. It doesn't it's, na exist without you. It doesn't exist without somebody creating it. In, in my... my my understanding, the way it is described, is the difference between nature and custom. Custom being yes. the way we live our lives, tradition, society, yes. essentially. Is that custom, a lot of the, tradition. Like Plato yeah. talked about that, too. Yeah. What, the difference between the way things is naturally it, are versus the way tradition is telling set, us they are. Has set things up I, to be. Yeah. And it's one of the things I like about cynicism in the sense that it sort of rejects tradition. Yeah. Or at least to look at it as, hey, maybe... Just because something has always been this way doesn't mean it's supposed to be this way or should yeah. be this yeah. way. Well, and that's, I mean, Epicurus kind of goes into that further. I kind of, honestly, if you're asking me, I like Epicurus a little bit more than I like His any of The story's not as fun as this guy. Is no, he a food guy? <laughs> no. He's a foodie? Oh, no. No, okay. no, he's not. He's another Greek philosopher. Anyway, we're not talking about Epicurus right now, though. But to cynics, wealth and fame and any material possessions were totally unnecessary for happiness because you can be comfortable and not happy and you can be happy but not comfortable so comfortable is not essential to be happy they're not mutually exclusive exactly. concepts huh. exactly or you could be miserable without comfort which would be horrible right that would be the worst thing yeah so it's saying that it's not required for comfort happiness. is not required for happiness no right yeah. kind of like how like millionaires aren't necessarily happier than, like, regular middle-class folk. Well, mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, uh, just look at any uh, any rich person's uh, wife or any suburban wife, well, like, housewife for that matter, the fact that it's all cocktails of Xanax and fucking yeah, do, white, white wine. wine. Just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean you're happy. Right. You know, just because you're really comfortable does not mean... You're really happy. What we're saying is uh, sign up for our Patreon so that you <laughs> can be happy. Give it all away. Yeah, right? <laughs> Give it to us so you can be happy and we will take the burden for yeah, you. Yeah, we'll take the burden and on we you. We'll be the martyrs. We'll give you happiness with more episodes. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> purpose drives contentment. Happiness is an illusion. Subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> That's nihilism. <laughs> now eat Arby's. Yeah, eat Arby's. Yeah, to cynics... Uh, so many people were unhappy because they struggled every day to maintain a material, comfortable life that wasn't essential for happiness. So forget all of it. Forget all of it. It's not essential. Well, and back then, like, what's the difference, man? They don't do have mean? electricity. They don't have running water. But they, so, don't, they don't have the, the concept of our modern Ignorance is bliss in this, in this sake. So. In, their, sure. in, their, in their view, their society is modern. My hut no. has a fucking chair with feathers in it, and you don't have a hut at all? Like, is that where that, well, that's, also, the, that's the dividing line? There were a lot of slaves back this time, too. A lot of oh, slaves. Yeah. Owning people was a thing. No Wi-Fi, but you get to own people. You, and nah, and you, have people, you have people feeding you grapes and fanning Ooh, you wait, with okay, leaves. no, never mind. Or you're, you're feeding people grapes and fanning. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. There's got to be one or guy. Or get your ass kicked. There's got to be one guy who's like, all right, you're all my new slaves. And they're like, boo. And he's like, what I want to do, because I'm the master, 
is I get to dote on you guys, whether you like it oh, or that not. That guy's a perv. Yeah, and he's like, I'm feeding he's you grapes, and like, I'm full, and he's like, I'm the master, you're hungry, I'm also playing with your dick. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds familiar. He's a weird guy in the footnotes of history. <laughs> also, I made him up just now. Nice. But it turns out, the Greek word for dog, kynos, was used to describe cynics. And it's where we get the word cynic. And cynicism is from this Greek word kynos. Because... It's dog living. It's dog living. It's living like a dog. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Because a dog doesn't have any pretenses. A dog lives essentially and carefree. It only needs what it ne- needs to... To survive, and that's it. And if a dog doesn't like you, you're either a, a pedophile or a cyborg. Yeah. So just throwing that out. <laughs> Dogs oh, yeah. like everybody. And Jerry Seinfeld's newest stand-up uses the phrase, that's hyena living. Yeah. And I was like, actually, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Same, I'm same a lot type, more, car- type of deal. I'm, I'm a halfway point between Jerry Seinfeld and Di- Diogenes, is what mm. I'm saying. Yeah. They're very different people. <laughs> and incredibly different. What's the deal with soup? We don't need it. It doesn't need to exist. I just... <laughs> As long as I have mud to lay in and sleep, I'm fine. <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> yeah. On the next episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, cynicism later gave birth to stoicism and all these other things. Stoicism is like the belief that emotions often stood in the way of happiness. So like emotions are, are, are what makes you unhappy. And that personal self-control and mental fortitude, that was virtuous. Because that helped you get over your destructive emotions, right? So they kind of flipped it a little bit in, mm-hmm. in the Roman times, much later. Going a little bit further, the Stoics, you know, they, they, they didn't want to destroy negative emotions. They only wanted to avoid emotional blocks by developing clear judgment and inner calm through diligently practicing logic and reflection and concentration, which honestly sounds a lot like DBT. And therapy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I would recommend therapy to everyone listening, or, by the way. Or being a Jedi Knight. Yeah, Buddhist monk, you know, like, yeah. if it is, it is. If it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and I can't really do anything about it. Because one's got a stick, one's got a laser sword. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever one you guys want to choose, there's not a right answer. But well, a one was answer. based off of another. One was real, and the others were Buddhist monks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, Diogenes was born sometime around 412 or 404 BCE. It's a pretty wide margin. It's pretty wide. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. 404 BCE. Yeah. Well, we don't, we don't know. You know, we don't know. So at one point, it could have been 8 or 16. Yes, exactly. Right? We don't really know. Well, it's that far back. Who fucking cares? Who gives a <laughs> shit? Who cares about any of this? Uh, Shut the show down. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was born in Sinope, which is on the southern coast of the Black Sea in modern-day Turkey. But little is known about his early life. But what we do know is that his father minted coins for a living. Ah, nice and fresh. Yeah. Fresh-ass coins. Now, either his father, or Diogenes himself, or his father and Diogenes together, in one way or another, were exiled for, quote, adulterating coinage. So they're putting them in their butts. Yeah. <laughs> Ash pennies. Oh, oh, yeah. Or Remember that? Doing their urethras. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, which is way harder. But That's the pe- painful. Pennies were smaller back then, you see. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. What they, the, uh, what's that from? Uh, uh, from Upright uh, Citizens Yeah, UCB. Brigade. Ass pennies, yeah. They put them in their butts and then put them into distribution, into circulation, so then when they'd see all the rich people with all the coins running through their fingers like they just found fucking El Dorado and shit, because yeah. that's what you do when you have that many yeah. coins. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta yeah, like, you, and you laugh. Yeah, you laugh and you shake between your fingers. Maybe you get some lightning if, if you're a bad guy. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> and they'd see those guys being like, those were on our asses. We're the same. Yeah. Nice. It's like, you all handled my ass pennies. Yeah, you're no better than me. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, what adulterating coinage could mean a few things. It could mean counterfeiting coins. It could be debasing the currency somehow. Maybe cutting it with a less valuable material, like... You know, like saving up your silver, maybe, yeah. and like cutting it with some tin, or yeah. you know, nickel or something. Right? Yeah, to make it value less. You yeah. know, listening to the Pixies uh, 
while doing all this stuff yeah. at the same time. Debaser. <laughs> yeah. Debaser. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I was all like, where is my mind? Okay. Nice. That's how we got into philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> but it could also mean, and this one's my favorite, that they were defacing the currency to make it worthless. Which, there is some archaeological evidence, but, yeah. you know, who knows if it was Diogenes and his dad, you know, when they found these defaced coins. But... Somebody was drawing mustaches on those <laughs> coins back in the day. Oh, no, I mean, they're, they're like ancient Greek coins, so they're like, this is obscene. Both sides have a woman with their, with their jugs hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Usually just one. Yeah. Usually it's just one side, which is fine, but this is both sides. This is fucking absurd. <laughs> like, usually the other side is your butthole, so... Yeah. <laughs> Breasts twice? This is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I want my butt coin. This is debauchery. <laughs> yeah. I like in the course of five minutes we talked about putting coins into butts and butts being on coins. That could also go into butts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we, Inception. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're adults. Nice. Grown-ass men in their 30s yeah, talking, about talking about putting about, coins up our ass. Yeah, putting things in your ass and, like, poop and pee and stuff. Oh, uh, poop and pee. Yeah, poop yeah. and pee-pee. Oh. That'll come up here soon. Yeah. Oh, uh, can't wait. <laughs> it is even said that Diogenes went to the Oracle of Delphi for advice. Uh, Pythia was her name, the priestess of the Oracle of Delphi. Mm. And she would, what she would do is she'd get stoned to the bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, we, we know is a couple of things. Uh, marijuana could have been one, and we know that they did use marijuana a lot. But it was probably... One of the two, maybe a mixture of these two things, uh, carbon dioxide mixed with methane or ethylene. Yeah, wasn't so, there a gas so, leak where they lived or so, something yeah, like so that? In the, <laughs> in the Oracle, yes. There were fracking nearby. It was a, it was a gas leak. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're right. She, was, she sat above this chasm in the ground. And what happened is this vapor would come up. The, these volcanic gases would emerge. And she would hallucinate. And that's how she got these visions and gave people advice. Oh, yeah. It's like uh, snorting uh, aerosol. Yeah. yeah, or, yeah, whippets. Yeah. Whippets, whippets, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember college. Oh, yeah, I remember when we had to hide them when I worked at Albertsons because so many kids was just doing them in the store and then leaving them behind. <laughs> so you had to ask a uh, crew member if you wanted to... Uh, Pull out the keys. Yeah. Well, the window <laughs> in the back. But yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. It was such a problem. <laughs> Jesus. That's Christ. crazy. You see kids doing it. You're like, please stop doing that. That's against the rules. Badass. <laughs> it was me doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he asked the oracle for for advice, and what she told him was to debase the currency. I was already <laughs> doing that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he's like, huh. It's like, so now, I said, just keep on course then, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> now, in this version, Diogenes decided what that meant was political currency rather than the coins themselves, uh, right? Uh, deface so, politicians themselves. Yeah, deface the currency of what politics are as a whole. Sure. You know? that's and what that's what Donald Trump's doing. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. <laughs> Yikes. I mean, you're not wrong. There are a lot of differing accounts about what happened to Diogenes when he came to Athens after he was exiled. The first story is that he contacted an acquaintance of his to get a cheap room for rent. But when his friend, like, didn't find one, he kind of, like, floundered or whatever. The rent in Athens at the time was out of control. (laughs) I mean, he lived in a wine cask. Well, he threw his hands up after he couldn't find a room, and he was like, this wine cask right here will do. Yeah. And decided that he was just going to live in a wine cask. It's like Seamus. Yeah. The other account tells of Diogenes witnessing a mouse uh, that he was observing simply existing without the desire to be a mouse, looking for food or trying to hide, just a mouse simply existing. And he's like, you know what? If a mouse is like a, a reviled creature in this society and can stand there and simply exist without looking for food or shelter or being afraid of anything, I can be like that. I can simply exist with only the essential bare minimums. He's making a lot of assumptions I about also, that mouse's fucking mental state. Yeah, right. like <laughs> as a prey animal, 
they're afraid all the time. Yeah, they live this their whole true. lives. This is true. This is what this is the story that is said. Like, like literally, like the was internal wrong. monologue of a mouse is like fuck, 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 fuck. Well, yeah. you you know that that mouse just going through a divorce and he didn't know how he was going to pay for child support. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, he got kicked out of his little rat hole. Like, what old Diogenes really saw was this. Oh, he too lives in his filth. Yeah. <laughs> we are the same, him and I. <laughs> Little did he know the mouse was middle aged and a divorcee. And although he's got like a really young and hot girlfriend, he's like, it's just a matter of time before she introduces me to her friends. And then I feel like a real fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, that mouse got stuck in a sales based pyramid scheme that he does not have the courage to walk away from. I think it's called multi level marketing. <laughs> yeah, multi level marketing. That's a funnel, you see. <laughs> so uh, I, I do like the fact that. Uh, these stories, it's all because, like, looking at this little tiny animal, so he himself became a hermit crab. Kind of, yeah, 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 pretty much. The wine cask is sort of his shell, but he, yeah, yeah, I can see that. But he never grows out of it. <laughs> no, no. He's maxed out already. Yeah. Diogenes went to Athens after he was exiled because he was a great admirer of Antisthenes. And wanting nothing, he wanted nothing more than just study under him. Like this guy studied under Socrates. This, you know, I, I want to study with this guy because he thought that Antisthenes was the true heir to the ideology of Socrates, not Plato. So he was stalking him because he thought he would, thought he had all the wisdom. Yes, exactly. Like me with Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The problem was, Antisthenes had no interest in taking this gross dude off the street as a pupil. <laughs> uh, like me with Tim Allen. Yeah. <laughs> so Diogenes persistently followed him around until Antisthenes finally, like... And this is, like, directly, like, from Diogenes Laer Laertius, who wrote about Diogenes Sinope. Mm -hmm. The name Diogenes is, like, Bill. Back yeah. then, so everybody was named Diogenes. <laughs> Took the long His way name is Mike back Smith. Then. He, Antisthenes, beat him with a staff <laughs> to go away. And what Diogenes said is he said, quote, Strike, for you will find no wood hard enough to keep me away from you, so long as I think you've something to say. End quote. And it, and it was a more innocent time because nobody made a boner joke. I nope. was about to make a boner joke, <laughs> so I'm glad that you boner. said that. <laughs> well, he did have an erect yeah. uh, penis when he said it, and so did uh, Antithesnes. But that's just because so. he was waiting for a more clean student to take care of that. How because many when you worked under a philosopher back then, you really worked under him. How many times <laughs> do we make the joke where somebody's like getting their ass kicked, and we make a joke that they have a boner? Uh, every time. <laughs> Nearly every single fucking time. It's, it's because every time We're we children. get our asses kicked, yeah. we all get boners. And children. it's a weird thing. That isn't normal for other people. <laughs> we just, we want to normalize. Because I get my ass kicked, kicked a lot because I got a mouth on me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how hard are you every time you get your ass kicked? Maxed. Same. Hard, hard I like same. the people kicking his ass because he's, once again, got a mouth on him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, Antisthenes took him on as a pupil. Fuck it. But... Diogenes took Antisthenes' ideas and turned them up to 11. Nice. What he figured was that if a philosophy was, you know, carried enough weight with it to live by, well, then why don't you actually live by it? Just tell other people to do it. Yeah, yeah. So See, this is like, why you're not happy, asshole. Yeah, you're not actually doing it. You're not actually being a cynic. So Diogenes went for it. He's already living in the wine cask. Like, full on big <laughs> He was already there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had to make very little personal changes to his lifestyle to adhere to this philosophy. I feel like he made up the philosophy to justify his yeah. lifestyle. <laughs> right. And just then he's already had it going before, yeah. before yeah. Diogenes. Diogenes just perfected it, you mm -hmm. see. His complete and total rejection of money, fame, societal norms, and anything else that was not completely in synthesis with living a self-sufficient life as simply as possible without comforts that would cloud his virtuous happiness was totally profound. He, he got rid of everything and, and totally lived this life. He would re reject all custom, tradition, vanity, and pretense that were merely human constructs that were created simply to govern the masses and something that uh, Diogenes refused to identify with or take part in. Cool. So, like, they even asked him, like, where are you from? You know, or who are your parents or whatever? And he said, 
I am a citizen of the cosmos. <laughs> he cool. refused to be identified with any societal label that they had. So, 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 what you're saying is that he uh, he was pulling the whole uh, sovereign citizen card. Kind of. Only, only like, you know, that'd be like, are you American? And you'd be like, no. I'm a citizen of the world. Yeah, it exactly. Is that, yeah. Right. Is it that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's uh, like the whole sovereign citizen. Thing. But but it would be, you know, it, it would take it a step further. And like, are you... Uh, I'm not even a citizen. Yeah, like, I, he, he exists in the world. He, I he is am. not from anywhere. He belongs to nobody or anything or any ideology. Are we humans or are we dancers? Or are we diva? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So much better. I wanted to make a diva joke. Yeah. But you beat are me we too. not men? We are diva. Yeah. No, I'm, a, I'm just a mongoloid. Yeah. Devo's cool. Go listen to Devo after this. Yeah. yeah. yeah I got more than one song or one good song. Diogenes mainly subsisted on scraps of food that he found or that people gave to him. They would just toss some scraps. Because again, they would call him the dog, the cynic, right? But people liked him, right? Oh, they loved him. Yeah. They loved him. Like, uh, we'll kind of get we'll kind of get into that a little bit here, but his only possession for a time was a cup to drink <laughs> drink and eat out of. He's like, "All I need is this one cup." That's all I need. And then he saw this this poor homeless boy mm-hmm. drinking water out of a puddle with his hands, just cupped and drinking water that way. And he looks at his cup. I can cup my hands. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks at his cup and he says, quote, fool that I am to have been carrying superfluous baggage all this time. End quote. <laughs> and he smashed the cup. Right Throw it against the wall. Right yeah. next to somebody who's like, I take that cup down. Mm, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Been using my own cup like an idiot. Yeah. yeah. He would wander around Athens with a, some say a small lantern or maybe even a candle in broad daylight, mind you. And he would, what he would do is he'd walk up to people and hold it in their face and look at them. And then he'd just keep going and <laughs> do it until it's basically, he's like baiting people. Yeah. You know, until somebody goes, all right, what are you doing, Diogenes? And he would say, I'm looking for an honest man, and I haven't found one yet. What a fucking troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sounds like the shit that we would do, like in Belltown. <laughs> no, we, would, we wouldn't berate people just for any old reason. Are I, you serious? I would have in my 20s. Come on, yeah. Chris, Chris would. <laughs> Chris is like, I'm not being annoying, I'm showing you how thin your skin is. <laughs> that sounds like Chris. <laughs> younger. Younger Yeah, like, like 22, 23. Yeah. Then, right before I became friends with him conveniently. Yeah, I stopped all that shit right then. Uh, That's not true at all. Yeah, no. <laughs> it was, if anything, I amped it up. Oh, no. You, 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 uh, you kind of changed altitude slowly and eventually landed at... Whatever's going on now. Yeah, whatever's <laughs> going on now. Yeah, I don't know what to call it. But I'm too exhausted to be an asshole all the time. Yeah. The older you get. It's, just, it's a young man's game. <laughs> so yeah, Diogenes, uh, he lived with the stray dogs of Athens. Badass. Because he <laughs> he admired. He admired dogs greatly. He even thought of dogs as the most virtuous animal. Because... Well, he's right. Again, they had no pre pretenses. They didn't care. They didn't know. cats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cats have shame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's actually true. That is true. That is true. Also, uh, it reminds me of that. I know... It's not quite the same thing, but it reminds me of that Always Sunny where Max like, yeah, I spent all night drinking a bottle of wine under a bridge with a dog. Yeah, drink, <laughs> drinking six bottles of champagne under a bridge with a bunch of straight dogs. <laughs> yeah. I believe is what he says. Yeah, that's right. Which is, Which is bonkers. Yes, I know, that sounds like a great night. How are you supposed sound... to carry the bottles of How'd he get him there? <laughs> yeah, or he drove, like he drove his truck down, Car, down yeah. underneath the, the overpass with like a pallet of champagne. Yeah. Well, I mean, six. Six is like what you have them in bags and you carry them yeah, carefully. Two plastic bags could with yeah, three, make it down three to each bag. You got it. You got but it. But still, like, you got to be kind of careful. But you also need all the dog food to attract the dogs. <laughs> yes. They don't just hang out down there. Or they pick the place because it was full of dogs. Or yeah. Oh, yeah. they know that's the bridge people go under to drink themselves to death. They know if they wait long enough, there will be dog food, if you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, human poop. That, I was going to say eat the people. Oh, shit. But we'll they probably eat poop. They yeah. eat cat poop. Yeah. 
All the time. They think it's are, delicious. They have no shame. They're disgusting. Horse yeah. poop. Same. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. They're, they're disgusting animals, and, and I love everything about yeah. them. Yeah. Well, so Diogenes. Yeah. He's he right. didn't think they were gross, though. Thought I they mean, were virtuous. That's... I mean, he, I feel like that's grossness is virtuous to him. Yeah. He would be like... Gross, grossness has nothing to do with virtue. He wouldn't call it gross. Gross has nothing to do with virtue. Him and those dogs were the gross crew, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so once, like a well-to-do group of like party goers, like they're a party on the market, you know, and mm. like... They're eating some drumsticks, Chicken you know, wings. Chicken wings. Nice. And they're throwing the bones at him. And he's like, you know, you call me a dog... And you throw me bones like a dog, you're gonna get a dog. And so what he does is he barks at them. Yeah. Uh -oh. And then uh -oh. runs over to them. This is game. And pisses on them. Nice. nice. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. He would even like run around town barking at people and biting people. <laughs> he would like go and bite people on the ankle. <laughs> I'd like to think up until that moment, he carried a small personal toilet. And right before that happened, That's what he the saw. Cup was for. Yeah, he saw a dog <laughs> peeing in the street and he was like. Why do I carry around this personal toilet? <laughs> well, you were you would be one hundred percent correct because Diogenes he piss and shit in the street no matter where he was. <laughs> He'd go to the theater in full view of everyone and like take shits oh, and this like guy. piss all over. He doesn't he doesn't care. This guy's advanced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. he was he was like a turbo Pee Wee Herman. I love it. Oh yeah. Oh god. <laughs> But but you know what? Everyone in town, yeah, loved the guy. They, 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 they yes, yes. Him. Take another shit. Well, yeah. no, because he's like the town character. Yeah. You know, and they're like, "What's going on, Diogenes?" And he's like, "Fuck you." And they're <laughs> like, <"I> "Love <laughs> that guy." <Yeah. laughs> Guy's awesome. And like so much so that like a couple of street kids broke his wine cask. Oh. And like the town got together and like got him a new one. <laughs> a new wine cask. Yeah. <laughs> to the, live in. <laughs> and they beat those kids to death. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Diogenes, we got you a new wine cast to sleep in. He's like, you're fettered by your wealth and material possessions. They're like, yeah, 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 we, we love you, dude. We love you. Yeah, no, we love you, man. Yeah. They're like, and you're crazy, like, man. Fuck you, man. Yeah. As he crawls in, he's like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Along with living like a dog, you know, pissing and shitting outside and wherever you want, uh, like a dog would, he would also masturbate. Outside, yeah. in yes! full view of everyone. Fuck yeah! Well, see, he had of a everyone. flashlight until he saw another man jerking off in public, and he realized <laughs> <laughs> I can do that better. <laughs> I don't even need this. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. Material excess. <laughs> the Joe Rogan podcast lied to me again. <laughs> <laughs> History Boys brought to you by uh, Flashlight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think they do. If you're thinking at this point that you might want to go donate to us on Patreon, <laughs> <laughs> but what he thought is that if something isn't shameful in private, it's not shameful in public. And you know what? He's not wrong. I'm just I'm not going to go jerk off in public. No, I've been conditioned <laughs> my whole life to not want to do that. Yeah, but well, it, I think so was he. It, it, did it anyway. Yeah, I don't have that strength of will. Uh, no. Or, um, but I want it's it. It's shameful in private, and the shame is part of the reason why it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, live without shame, man. Live without shame. Shame makes it hot, dude. That's all I'm saying. Get rid of the shame. It's no more fun. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, you're having like a steamy affair with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and once once you're just in a relationship with yourself, you're like, boo. Oh, uh, you're, you're self. Uh, what did Emma Watson say? Self self partnered. <laughs> that's a fancy way of saying get the fuck out of my face. I don't feel like. I think that's probably what it was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah. So once while jerking it in public, he was confronted. What are you doing, man? Because like it's not like he covered himself up. Yeah. No. Nah. No, no, no. There's no way that guy's doing it in a corner. He's doing no. it in the town square. He's just sitting there. Yeah. yeah. This is what his reply was. And I quote, If only it were as easy to banish hunger by rubbing my belly. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> and fuck yeah. Makes a great point. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was the way at the time of saying, uh, you get the horns, you grab the bull. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I flipped it. You see, I did a thing. I got it. Yeah. yeah I, I, I see. I, I kind of touched on this earlier, but Diogenes, notoriously so, 
hated Plato. Hated him. Despised oh, him. Oh, he's in it. Yeah, I see that. Because, like, Plato's totally. sitting there in his academy, yeah. and he's teaching, and he's, like, and he's like, I used to study with Socrates, and... I hope all of you listen. He never wrote anything down, but I do, you, you know. So I'm the authority on Socrates. Diogenes wasn't buying any of that shit. He's like, yeah, you're salty and non-toxic, but you're not that smart. <laughs> 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 so there's a really famous story that when Plato declared that man was just but a featherless biped. Ugh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Diogenes burst through the door of Plato's Academy, and he held aloft a plucked chicken. (laughs) And he exclaimed, Behold, I've brought you a man. (laughs) Fuck yes. Oh my god. (laughs) Fuck you and your fun factory, Plato. (laughs) Dude, Diogenes is just fucking Gigi Allen without the heroin. (laughs) Actually, is Gigi Allen. (laughs) Yeah. Incredibly on point. Yes, yes. (laughs) He didn't give a fuck. But this fucked with Plato so much that he changed his definition of man to include with long, flat nails. <laughs> Which is dumb. What the fuck does this even mean? I don't fucking know. It's stupid. He needed to come up with some definition. He was, he was getting everyone's hostile little face because everyone had the same thing on their tongue and that was Fight Club. Trying to explain, <laughs> trying to explain everyone to why he should be the king. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now the details are fuzzy, but at some point... Diogenes was captured by pirates and taken to Crete to be sold into slavery. <laughs> Have fun with that, slavers. <laughs> right? Yeah, and that's like, kind of uh, what happened. Slaver keeps shitting himself. Or slave yeah. keeps shitting himself. He's just jerking it while we're talking to him. <laughs> like, can you yeah. stop jerking it? He's like, what, nah. what's wrong? He's Does like, this why? make you uncomfortable? We're all just people, man. <laughs> yeah, He's like, are exactly. you saying you don't jerk it? Yeah. yeah. Wait, you're saying... Why isn't why isn't here is as good a place as any? Am I not provocative? Yeah, <laughs> right. And you know when the slavers they they asked him you know because they got to make they got to take an inventory and and find what each slave's skills are and sell them based mm-hmm. off of that. Yeah. So when they asked him what his skills were, Diogenes replied, "That of governing men." Right. <laughs> cool. Which is yeah, fucking that. rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> He then pointed to a man named Xeniades, who I am probably certainly mispronouncing. Yeah, fuck it. He, yeah. Was, he was himself a Greek philosopher, but he demanded to be sold to him because he, quote, looked like he needed a master. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> I mean, the balls on this guy. <laughs> he didn't give a fuck. Now, Xeniades did, in fact, buy Diogenes. He used him as a tutor to his children. And soon, uh, he took him to Corinth. That's where uh, he lived. But soon, uh, Diogenes became more of like a member of the family rather than a slave. And like, he could go off and do whatever he wanted and no one really cared. (laughs) And he kind of continued his life the same way he had been in Athens and Corinth. You know, like sleeping on the street and like yelling at people. Basically, they treated him like a dog. Yeah, yeah, he's just a dog. I love him. Yeah. And oh, this is great. He's like a junkyard dog with a chain yeah. around his neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cool. Yeah. But the most famous story about Diogenes, oh, here although we go. it's almost certainly untrue, occurs in Corinth when he met one of the most powerful men on the planet at the time, and arguably maybe ever, Alexander the Great. Yeah. Colin now, Farrell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I met Colin Farrell. No, now word had spread. We know. <laughs> <laughs> word had spread about this wise philosopher all over the Greek world. And Alexander was an admirer of Diogenes. So he went to meet with Diogenes in Corinth. When he found him, he found this, you know, old man basking in the sun, just sunbathing. <laughs> just laying down, just like. Old balls. Just, just being a hound dog. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> ow, ow. So Alexander, you know, he walks up with his bodyguards, you know, and he walks up and he introduces himself and he asks if there's anything that he can do for him or anything that he needs. Something to that effect. Yeah. Anything that he needs. Anything he can do. And Diogenes wakes up and he goes, 
Well, you can get out of my son. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And Alexander and his men, they actually left laughing about the exchange. Uh, it is even said that Alexander told his men as they were walking away, quote, if I were not Alexander, I should wish to be Diogenes. End quote. <laughs> but oh. Diogenes heard that, and he said, if I were not Diogenes, I would still wish to be Diogenes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Alex. I fucking love how much, like, he just, he's all about himself, that, that... He's comfortable he's, with himself. He's self-sufficient. He's comfortable with himself. He's self-sufficient. He doesn't he's need anyone. so anymore. stoked about himself. Like, that yeah. is... Oh, I wish I had that confidence with yeah. myself. It's not conceitedness. Nobody it's just in Seattle has he just, that confidence. I don't think nobody yeah. really does. I know people down in L.A. and New York like have that fake self-confidence, mm -hmm. but... Not everybody. No, th let's, this is like the legit let's, fucking shit. Let's not generalize either. Not everybody in L.A. Oh, I do. But I'm like, going to generalize. No, I'm going to say everyone. Every I, I, I've, I've met in L.A. single person. Anyway, I just talk shit about you know, Seattle, you know, too. There's yeah. people with fake confidence all over the nation. Kentucky, Alabama, also other places. Missouri. 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 Ohio. Iowa. I'm talking about Topeka, yeah. Kansas. Idaho. Montana. Yeah. Tuscaloosa. Alaska. Tuscaloosa, <laughs> Oklahoma. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Aruba. Jamaica. Come on. <laughs> <Fremont>. <laughs> I found a way to make another Kokomo reference in this episode. Thank you so much. All the much best for that. references are Kokomo references. Oh my god. Hey, we gotta take it fast before we now, take it slow. Now, although oh, yeah. this story is almost certainly untrue, what it does is it illustrates that Alexander, the most powerful man in the world with all of his armies and wealth and power, was untouchable. No man could possibly do anything to Alexander. He was so powerful. But on the other hand, Diogenes, with nothing and wanting nothing was just as powerful as Alexander because there was nothing you could do to him at all. You couldn't do anything to him. Oh, man. I that makes him just as powerful. I do feel like Alexander, it's like when you go to see your favorite comedian who's like one of those insult comics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. he got me. He got me good. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> he roasted me. Ah, I got roasted. Time. That's what I wanted. Yeah, he's like, look at us, just a couple of couple of men being base with one another. Yeah. Me in my gold armor with my bodyguards. You nude in the sun and covered in filth. We are the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got Diogenes. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> with an apostrophe D. Yeah. yeah. Now there are a lot of stories about how Diogenes died. No, there are three versions. Mm. The it's only like constant... I was going to say it was like Clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the, with the candlestick. Yeah. The conservatory. Uh, no, uh, That's not with the movie. The movie, the yeah. Because oh, what, oh, the movie yeah. had three endings? Like five well, endings. No, it has oh. an ending for each character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. And you were supposed to, in different parts of the country, they played different endings. So you'd see, like, yeah. the Mrs. White ending or the Mrs. Yeah. Scarlet Oh, interesting. But so, Scarlet yeah, but so you'd tell people, oh, that's not how that's it ended. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then, so, yeah, then when they put it on, like, uh... On VHS, yeah. it was, like... A they show big all the endings. endings. Yeah. 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 That's what I remember growing up. I only saw it with all the endings. Same, same. That French maid, man, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it awoke in something in me. Yeah, as a boy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I like this. I'm going to be a Diogenes in the living room in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's beautiful. The, the only constant things about all these stories is that he died in Zenadius's house in Corinth. That's the only thing that they all have in common. Now, one slash two stories is that he died because he ate raw octopus or raw ox hoof. Rocktopus. Sure. Yeah. Rockpus. Now, now, first of all, I don't understand how you can confuse the two. Like, they're two very different things. Yeah. And it's, second off, how do you eat raw ox hoof? You just cut it straight off and... Bite go to town. Yeah, uh, nice and nice and fresh. Uh, well, you remember uh, in Kingpin terrible. when he takes off the cow shoes or the horseshoes, rather? The horse shoes yeah. off the horse. 
<laughs> that's such a great movie. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. And he's just holding all their feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. He has a whole arm full of it's feet. It's funny they show the because the, the horse is giant. They yeah. show the horse later in a different scene, and, and it's, it's much way shorter. shorter. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. That's right because they tell him to, like take off the horseshoes, and he just <laughs> cut off all the feet. Yeah. He also milked the cow. Oh yeah, oh. it was he's like we well, don't have a cow. It's a yeah. bull. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, crass. I loved gross. it. It's it's. The Fairley Brothers' cr- crowning achievement. I agree. Yeah. It's better than there's, there's something about Mary. Can you, I agree. Can you go away, wash off that perfume, and come back and take our order? Oh, God. <laughs> Bill Murray is such a piece He's of shit. He's such a piece of garbage in that <laughs> yeah. The next story is that he died from an infected or rabid dog bite. That uh, sounds... Well, that sounds a little bit more plausible to me. Well, the first one's kind of just him eating out of the garbage. Yeah. Which also sounds a little plausible. <laughs> yeah. This one, to me, sounds the most plausible. It could have been a double thing. It oh, could have been both. Oh, could have been both. He's it's like, like I, was I probably could have gotten up. over that food poisoning from eating out of the trash if I didn't get bit by a rabid dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My constitution's way low. (laughs) Fighting over the same hoof. I only got so many hit points. Uh, (laughs) But he was absolutely elderly. Yeah. He he was an old man when he died. Uh, It's like, I really can't can't eat garbage and get bitten by rabid dogs like I used to. No. (laughs) It's a young man's game. (laughs) It's a young man's game. Uh, But my favorite story that is 100% false is that he grew tired of human existence and merely held his breath until he died. <laughs> Again, like... This that did not happen, but... If there's anyone that could do it, yeah. it would be him. <laughs> Once you pass out, you start breathing again. I know, I know. You can't... You There's no way you can do that. Maybe he was like, dude, I'm, so, I'm too old to keep eating garbage, keep getting bit by, by, by rabid dogs, I will now hold my breath and die. Yes. And that's what killed him. All three. He did all three of them. At the same time. Yeah. When he was alive, he told people that he wanted his body thrown over the city walls, quote, to the dogs. Throw me in the trash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's a regular Frank Reynolds. He's, this is very yeah. sunny, except that this guy didn't drink. Yeah. Eh, he may have. I, I almost heard, feel yeah, like... Yeah, and I've heard he did and didn't. Eh, I've heard a lot. In yeah. the in the movie version, the young version is Charlie Day, and the old version oh. is Danny DeVito. Oh, that'd yes. be great. Yeah, that's um, perfect. Alexander so, the Great would be Glenn Howerton. Oh, yep. God, <laughs> oh, no, to it. That's a good one. <laughs> that's really good. The The Oracle could be uh, yeah. uh, D. No, yeah, no, yeah. Sweet D would be the uh, the plucked chicken that he <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Zach. That's yeah. great. That's great. Quiet, bird. When people rejected tossing his body to the dogs, they were like, this is no way to treat a dead body. He said, well, then give me a staff so that I can fight the dogs away with him. <laughs> and they're like, and they're like well, but but that is preposterous. You'll be dead. And he's like, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like <laughs> if I'm unaware uh, that the dogs are tearing me to pieces, and I can't use a staff to fight them away with because I'm unaware I'm dead. What difference does it make then if the dogs do tear me to pieces? Yeah, that's why he got drunk with them under that bridge. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's why they were hanging out. They're like, any minute now, this guy's gonna. Lo- Lose consciousness, yeah. and then it's it's old dog time. Yeah. Nice. I, I, like I said, when I die, I wanted to be a big party where all my friends hang out and eat. Yeah, me, <laughs> yeah, me too. Eat you. <laughs> yeah, yeah all his friends fuck. are the fucking dogs. Yeah. Throw it to the dogs. We're dogs. Yeah. I'm going to eat your flesh, is what I'm saying. Going against the, his wishes, he was buried in, a, in Corinth under a pillar that was erected to his memory that depicts him on top of a barrel holding a lantern with a dog at his side. Oh. I mean, yeah. that, that I mean, is cool, but it's against his wishes. I would argue it is. That he would by hate going that. against his he wishes, would hate that. Right. having somebody who's like immortalized and buried respectively, yeah. throwing them to the dogs, would be as much disrespect as that, doing that to Diogenes, because it was against yeah. his wishes. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like to think that uh, Diogenes, uh, if he was but I guess, mo- <laughs> modern day, he would have uh, went to the Arby's plant and was like, hey... Make me into one of your sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. Chop me up nice and thin. Yeah. Nice and thin. Put me in them sandwiches. <laughs> cover With me. The horsey sandwiches. Cover me yeah, exactly. in that quote unquote cheddar sauce. I will also, you know, I'm also going to say the fact that they gave right? him a statue and all that shit. He's dead. He still wouldn't care. 
This right. is also like, true. He's like, this is yeah. also true. You can't really disrespect what him. Difference you couldn't does disrespect it make? him in life. What difference does it make? Yeah, you it can't makes no do anything difference. to him. Yeah. That's the point. They're yeah. like, we're going to put you in a gold fucking, like, uh, I don't know, mausoleum. <laughs> he's and he's just, like, Fuck it. it's your money, bro. Yeah, don't waste your money. Your, yeah. You're Although me, money's fucking pointless, so yeah. go for it. Yeah, whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Everything stupid sounds rad. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> now, it is well known that cynicism took hold in the Roman world much later. With their own brand of cynicism, they had, you know, Roman cynicism that became stoicism. We talked about this. And what they did, yeah, is they, they, they just rejected the have no shame and just injected modesty into mm -hmm. it. Sure. Is kind of what it's they, like a mild version of yeah, that. Yeah, they're like, uh, but you don't have to be naked mm -hmm. in the streets yeah, jerking off, jerk off and, in the street. and yeah. taking shits and peeing in the street. You don't have to do that. <laughs> it's just as good. Again, I'm oversimplifying, but, but it's also known. Cynicism took hold in much of the Greek-speaking world, too, in, in years after Diogenes, hundreds of years after Diogenes. There is a highly controversial theory oh, I can't wait. that Jesus Christ himself was, in fact, a cynic philosopher. Cool. Sick. From all the shit in the street? Yeah. Just jacking it. <laughs> <laughs> Suffer the children come unto me. Oh, yikes. <laughs> we're, we're a blasphemous show here on History Boys. Uh, no, there is evidence that cynicism was alive and well in the areas surrounding Nazareth during Jesus' time. Now, if we picture how Jesus is described in the Bible, he looks an awful lot like a cynic philosopher, dressed very simply, almost like a peasant, Straight up scrub. Few, few possessions. No need for money, material, anything. And even rejecting those things. Right. Uh, We're looking at you, mega churches. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And he could have absolutely encountered other cynic philosophers that were going at this time as well. And the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament are strikingly similar to most cynical philosophers. Uh, again, like I said, you know, social status, fame. The thing is, though, is that there were, like, Jewish cynics in the Greek-speaking world. Like, like Jerry so, Seinfeld. <laughs> right. So uh, there, there, there were things to tie it to Ju Judaism yeah. that were also cynical. What are the deal with the aqueducts? <laughs> 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 well, C -c Comedians in chariots getting coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. wine. I don't fucking know. Did, I don't know if they have sacrament is. For them, though, acting virtuous was for the grace of God, mm -hmm. right? That's like a Jewish cynic, yeah. right? It's all of this combined. We even have rock solid evidence, admittedly much later in the second century AD, that Christians even converted or injected cynical belief into their writings and way of teaching Christian doctrine. The Apostle Paul, even, when he made the initial split between Christianity and Judaism because he wanted to be able to baptize the Gentiles, right? They were outside of the religion. Uh, that's kind of the initial split between the two. He would dress down, and he would, he would appear to the Gentiles as a cynic philosopher, living very simply Wasn't in rags. Wasn't Paul technically the first pope? Yes, he was. We've been Cross listening to Partifacts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He was a cynic. He was a pope. Yeah. He was but a man. Now, this is hotly <laughs> debated to this day. It is just a theory, but... There's some sense to it, for sure. I have some examples Ooh, from oh the shit. Bible. Here we go. That I'm going to read you. Oh, well, here we go. This is why so, you got that Bible app. I got the Bible. This is from the New American Standard Bible, which is a it, it, it's said by a lot of people. Of course, people will disagree with this. It is the Bible after all. <laughs> uh, uh, that is the most accurate translation, and that means uh, literal translation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, other other Bibles are dynamic translations, the, yeah, which they, are basically just trying to get across the meaning, what they mean mm -hmm. sure. when they say this. The, this is more for study. And more for, like, if, if you're going to do, like, an exogesis and stuff on the New Testament and stuff like that, something we can talk about on a different day, you would use this Bible to do so. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let me read you a couple of passages from the, from the New Testament that I think you're going to like. I like them already. It puts some religious okay. music in the back of this. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 10.9. 
This is where Jesus is is telling his his disciples how they act in accordance with his teachings and how to be Christians and when they go into a city how they are to carry themselves. So, Matthew 10:9. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts or a bag for your journey or even two coats or sandals or a staff for the worker is worthy of his support. And whatever city or village you enter, inquire who is worthy in it, and stay at his house until you leave that city. And he also goes on to say, Whoever does not receive you, nor heed your words, as you go out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. Fuck him, is yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, I got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically he's saying, uh, find somebody that you can uh, crash on their couch well, with, and then uh, if yeah. they don't let you, then fuck those guys. Fuck them. Yeah. But, but, but think about this. You know, he's telling you not to have money. Right. So fuck that. Not even have coats or sandals or staff, because if you're working for, for God, you don't need any of those things. Mm-hmm. Second thing, doesn't inquire who is worthy inside a city sound an awful lot like Diogenes walking around with a lantern mm-hmm. asking who is an yeah, honest yeah. Man. man. Right. I'm just thinking like Money Belt. Like that could be like a prequel to Money Plane. <laughs> <laughs> Where Jesus and his crack team of thieves, yeah. they're going to redistribute the wealth big time. Hell yeah. So this is Matthew 21, 12. Ooh. This is like a lot of people's favorite part of the book of Matthew. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out those who were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and seats of those who were selling doves. Mm. So he's in there. He's fucking up the monetary system. Is he debasing the currency? Is he giving it less value? Eh, A little bit. Right. Wait wait till he hears about megachurches. Oh, my God. (laughs) And then there's this, which is a rejection of family. And also your roots, right? He also said things, uh, I'm not going to read it, but he said things like, you know, leave your family behind, leave your, nice. all this and follow me because... Kylo Ren. Yeah. yeah be, well, because... <laughs> God damn it. Not only... Ask, kill it if you have to. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only is he a cult leader, it, it's a rejection of your roots and an embrace of being a cosmic citizen, as Diogenes would put it. So he says right here, he was preaching outside this town. While he was still speaking to the crowds, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside. That's right, Jesus had brothers, my friend, seeking to speak with him. And someone said to him, Behold, your mother and brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But Jesus answered the one who was telling him and said, Quote, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? He's basically rejecting yeah. his family and saying, like, this, this is my family. I have no son. I, I have no family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he threw an empty so, tumbler of uh, scotch into the fireplace. <laughs> so there is a lot of evidence that, that early Christianity and even Jesus himself had a lot of roots in cynicism. I think it's really interesting. I, it's highly controversial and debated, and I, the jury's still out on it. But I do feel like it's kind of... Almost unrealistic to believe that there wasn't some influence. Well, you know what I mean. Well, well, the right. guy, the the guy that he was a Christian who, in the second century, converted to cynicism. He con- he converted uh, to cynicism in a Palestinian jail, mm-hmm. which should tell you something because cynicism had really taken hold in that area of the Greek speaking world, and it is well known that Jesus spoke Greek as well as Aramaic, and there's crossover there between the Cynic philosophers of the time. They both spoke Greek and Aramaic. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to get into it, but there is definite crossover. There's not enough evidence to say yay or nay, but boy, it looks looks pretty pretty close. The idea of living, living modestly... Not no material excess. I mean, that does feel pretty close. You oh know? yeah, yeah. I mean, right. and the other thing is, like, the big difference between if they're they would consider themselves cynics to what Diogenes yeah. views is is like the biggest difference is they they bring God into it. So where uh, Diogenes, the importance would be to the self. There's not, ne- not necessarily because what Diogenes would consider God is just the universe. Sure, because. This is way, you know, this is years and years and years I'm before talking Jesus about, yeah. life. If When Diogenes speaks of God, he speaks of just 
the universe. Almost nature and, and well, universe. It's also, I mean, but I, but the Christians boil it down to the Abrahamic God. I guess Abrahamic my point is it God. has more to right. do with the relationship of specifically a God, whereas yes. his is more of a broad, his part in that. If, well, I don't know. Well, but there is a great similarity between well, those and, two. And, and honestly, to that point, in the New Testament, the, quote, grace of God technically is nature mm-hmm. and the universe and everything around you. That I is the grace of God. Wait for Indiana Jones. They're going to wheel out Harrison Ford. He's going to be like, "Well, I'm all right. We're going to find out whether or not Jesus shit in the street or not." Come on, guys. <laughs> it's going to be on That's Disney Plus, they're... baby. Yeah. That is what they should do. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his nurse is gonna be pushing him on a wheelchair through oh, a cave that's yeah. collapsing. And the, like they have inside the cave, they have like carvings of the walls, and it's like, see, right here, dead giveaway. <laughs> this right here is a carving of Jesus jerking off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see the onlookers? They're yeah. horrified. <laughs> he's just sucker punching everybody he meets. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's how he was able to cure the blind. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right in the throat. And the first thing they saw was his giant uncircumcised penis, and they were like, make me blind again, please. <laughs> Why was it uncircumcised? Yeah, it would be circumcised. It oh, would yeah. be circumcised. Yes, he was, he was Jewish. I, it was Jewish. Jewish. If anyone was circumcised, it was that it guy. It was Jesus. Oh, yeah, they just did it with like a big old knife they back cir- then. They circumcised way too much of it. Just yeah. like those paper cutters that you had in elementary school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cut off the head. They're like, not bad. He's like, you should have seen it before. Yeah. <laughs> you should see the other guy. Because <laughs> I cut off part of his dick, too. Yeah. I the don't know. We glued oh, him yeah. I thought I his like, holy dick did a lot of damage to the, the paper cutter, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It broke it. Yeah, yeah. they, they slammed and that, it down That's how they knew it was it. the Lord. Yeah. The, the, it was, the whole circus he has was, risen. <laughs> hey, the, the whole circumcision thing was like that of uh, Kung Pao when uh, the, the fight scene in the opening with the little baby. Oh yeah. Ah. yeah, the funniest thing in that whole movie, in my opinion, is when there's like the like the nemesis of the guy, and the old wise man is like, "Oh, don't mind him. We trained him wrong as well, a joke." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I love this man. I I've never heard about this guy. Oh, he's and great. and again, to me, he is old timey Gigi Allen. Oh yeah. And oh, I, yeah. I, oh, I yeah. can I can imagine him singing "Bite It, You Scum" at the top of his lungs oh, yeah. while he's barking at people and biting their ankles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Gigi Allen is just turning Diogenes up to eleven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just more heroin. Yeah. Yeah. More, more heroin, heroin. More punk rock. More rape. More, oh, a lot yeah. more rape. Jeez, uh, let's that, not forget that. that. I don't think Diogenes ever consumed his own poopy. Yeah. You don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah. You, but there's he, no mention of that. He, he, he might have tried once by himself. Like, like, this, like, this, this oh, that's a bridge too far. Yeah. <laughs> not for me. So <laughs> not for me. eating its own poop, and he was like... I don't even Roca, need Omen fruit. Roca, Omen <laughs> Roca. <laughs> 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 All right. I don't even need food. That's another another one on the books, folks. I guess uh, we are the the history boys. That's right, we are. Um, I'm Tyler Armentrout, uh, history boy, extraordinaire. There you go. Okay. Uh, right. I, I tried to do it. In- Intra. That's hard to say. Fuck it. Yeah, have fun with that, know. guys. Yeah. yeah, I did. Uh, anyway. Trying to create our own. I, I'm Chris Whedon. I'm a history boy, and I have to pee really bad, and I've been holding it for we'll you guys. Through. We'll get through this. You can't hold it much longer, guys. <laughs> we'll get through this together, Chris. The, there we the, go. The shoot shall, pa- shall pass. Uh, I, I am Zach Mech. I am a history boy and uh, a, a bit of a gambler. Oh. And, uh, ooh, that's, ooh. that's a down periscope reference, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Is that the one where the, there's a Band-Aid in the food? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Start, a bit like... of a gambler, sir. <laughs> Kelsey anyway. Grammer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah, bring it full circle. From, Back from to money, money plane. From money plane to down periscope. <laughs> money plane, money train, the beast to automobiles. Frager. And I am Jerry Nash. I am a... Whew, I'm cooking. I'm a sweaty history boy warm, right man. now. I'm cooking in this room. That's okay. I I do it for you guys. Thank you so much for listening as always. And thanks thanks for, for bearing through some of the, the harder episodes we, we do. We do all of it for you, Damien. All of it for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't forget to follow us on, on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we love hearing from you too. Uh, our our Email address is historyboyspodcast at gmail.com. And we do have a Patreon set up. We're going to be adding stuff here very soon. 
And can I just say right now, guys, this is the one-year anniversary ah. of history, boys. We've been around for one year. Woo! There we, we go. Did it. We did it. We did it. They all said we'd fail. Yeah. But we, we wouldn't <laughs> Not have... Not to our faces, <laughs> we but would, I heard about We it. wouldn't have been anywhere without you, the listener. We love you so much. Thank you we all. We love hearing from you. We love hearing all of your suggestions. It's really great. All your japes. All that stuff. If you're, your, if you're going to be a dick, we also love cheers. mocking you. So that's good. We, <laughs> oh. we love mocking you. And, and as uh, a one-year special, we have a video on our OnlyFans of Chris trying to hold back going to pee, but then failing and peeing his pants. <laughs> yeah. And then we all laugh. And at then him. Yeah, then we all laugh. Does, and it is hot. We have a yeah. lot of videos You can like pull that. your pud to that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Right in your living room. Oh, yeah. gross. In front of your family. Like Diogenes and Tendon. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> We don't. We don't recommend. No, no. We, I don't recommend living like Diogenes. You do it in the dark in the bathroom, facing away be from the mirror. Be ashamed of shame. <laughs> <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves at all times. That's where yeah. he was wrong. You know, since we started this podcast, we've had a lot of other podcasts that have like, you know, they've treated us really nice on social media and stuff. They've shared our episodes and things like that, and they've listened to our show, and I think that's really cool. I just want to say a couple of thank yous. Dan at Past Less Traveled. We. You know, we had a promo on our show and uh, one on his. He was nice enough to let us on his show. So that's great. I want to thank him. His his podcast is Past Less Traveled. Pontifax, I, I really like their show and they're really Big nice fan. to us. Big fan. Probably one of the most bingeable yeah, I'm podcasts. About, I'm about six episodes in and, and the, the format that they use to essentially lay out each each uh, pope over time is like yeah it's it's very like kind of bingeable cuz they yeah. have they have a a really solid um kind of like rating rubric for what they did right what they did wrong scandals things like that totally yeah yeah it's like really interesting hearing them go through it and it's funny yeah you know so you see whenever i listen to Pontifex, i i can't help but think of uh, it like a I, I imagine a, a 2D fighting game, and I, I want the whole uh, the the <laughs> roster being different popes. But, <laughs> oh yeah, and, you get to and choose like all their portraits it, and stuff. Exactly, and, like, and choose like, your fighter. And each special move is based off of how ridiculous they are. The hosts yeah. on that show are Bree and Fry. Yeah, yeah. So big shout out to Bree and Fry. They're fantastic. Um, yeah, great hosts, great show. Yeah, watch it or listen to it. Yeah. I mean, I guess you, you can go. watch your well, phone, play it. Yeah, watch your you watch the time on your phone on the bar, and but don't adjust it because you're gonna miss yeah. good information if you skip anything. I also want to thank Rob at Fat Drunk and Stupid. This guy's great. His podcast, he talks about you know he tries to make sense of the world around him. He has guests on his show too, but he's a really level-headed guy. The History Boys would definitely get along real well with him. He's very nice to us on social media. So I just want to say thank you, Rob. Your podcast is dope. Everyone should check it out. He's he's a veteran, too. And so he talks a lot about that. It's really good. It's really good. I highly recommend it. I also want to say a big thank you. There, there's more, too. And I think, I feel like every episode, we'll, we'll do more thank yous. But I want to give a big thank you to Darren at the Potscast. He has a sports cast, and I think it's pretty dope, especially the wrestling episodes. I know me and Tyler are uh, big wrestling fans. We like wrestling. And so yeah. those are the ones that we really dig. Uh, I know Zach really liked one about uh, live events because that's what Zach does for a living. I miss my work. Yeah. Fucking everyone wear a mask. Uh, I want to go back to work. This is fucking ridiculous. I want to go back to bars. So. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go to a concert again. Yeah. Maybe. I want to I, I go to a bar where there's a band that Zach's doing the audio for, and then I just hit all I hit all the stops. Yeah. yeah. But until and maybe then, the band is my friend, too. Yeah. So yeah. it's another. Until then, we're just going to have to listen to all these great podcasts. Mm -hmm. And pots, cla pots classes, pots casts, <laughs> plops class, pots yeah. cast, pots casts, and podcasts. Yeah. It's and and by the way, we are now on historypods.com. And it's this really great thing that was set up by other podcasters in the sort of historical podcast community. Yes, there is a historical, like, indie podcast community. So you can find us there too, and you can find other uh, historical podcasts on there as well. 
Uh, and it's really easy to listen to on there. Really easy to find all the new yeah, podcasts. Yeah, I found a couple stuff. pretty cool ones on there. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's a, that's a good place to find them. And Kara at Time Travel Talks is fantastic. You're a mensch. Uh, Thank you so great. much for inviting us into <laughs> so the great. the community. You know, Body Count. Yeah, is a great podcast. Highly recommend. Just finish them. the episode on the Concord. Yeah, Jessica's I'm, I'm, fantastic. I'm, she's she's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I just want to say thank you to all these people. You're you're really helping us out. I'm glad to be a, a part of everything. All right. Love you. Bye.